Welcome back to The Breakfast. Moving on from talking about Senator Liu Ndume and his uh, travails, we now will be talking or uh, moving to another parliament, uh, as Felicity earlier mentioned. It's uh, now the UK parliament. And uh, yesterday, the 23rd of November, the end SARS protest was brought up for debate in the parliament uh, to, of course, talk about the possibility of sanctions against uh, targeted individuals in Nigeria for the roles that they played in uh, the end SARS protest and uh, uh, of course, police brutality in Nigeria. Uh, um, the, of course, uh, UK Parliament they didn't eventually come to a conclusion yesterday. They um, um, said, of course, they would, they would gonna, you know, do all, another debate or going to have a continued. Uh, well, they did and see, raise some um, pertinent um, issues. Yes, they talked about the funding that was made available to continued. Um, uh, funding for the SARS operatives uh, before they were disbanded yes. in spite of numerous allegations of brutality, brutality against it. Uh, some of the members uh, faulted that and they also said they should review the funding of security agencies and maybe divert that money to other humanitarian yes. issues until the government does something. But they did not speak clearly on the sanctions. What they alluded to was that sanctions they are considering it, but they can't divulge this because it will weaken um, the effect of, of the those sanctions. sanctions. But well, can they actually really, truly sanction Nigeria? Of what impact would that sanction be? We'll have our guest uh, to help us uh, make sense of that. In this conversation as well, we'll be talking about um, uh, the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, writing to the CNN, asking them to reinvestigate uh, the reports that they published on the and, and, uh, Lecky Tollgate shooting. And of course, they're saying even if they don't do an independent further investigation that the government of Nigeria is going to take action. What are these actions? Yeah. Help us with this. We have uh, Mr. Ladipo Johnson, uh, who is a legal practitioner as well as a public affairs analyst. Thank you very much for joining us. Okay, okay I, I think uh, the network just uh, yanked him yeah. off. It happens with technology, hopefully. Uh, yeah. I oh. earlier mentioned, uh, just back. before we bring him in, I earlier mentioned that the CNN um, has done another report. They've done mm -hmm. a follow-up report on the first one um, after uh, the Nigerian government's um, yeah, uh, petition. Yeah, I'm actually yet to they see did, that. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. so I saw it early this morning. They did another report and, of course, reviewed some of the earlier statements um, and um, said that they stand by their statements, stand by their report. Also brought in some perspectives from the Judicial Panel of Inquiry in Lagos State. And um, this was, once again, shown not on CNN International now, but on CNN US. US. Good morning to uh, Larry Port Johnson. Thanks for joining us, sir. Oh, the network isn't so nice. Uh, we'll keep trying to get him. Maybe we could um, revert to getting him to talk to us via telephone if the network um, is not cooperating. Uh, but a couple of things I'd like to highlight on the matter with the UK uh, Parliament speaking up. Um, I would like to know from uh, Mr. Johnson, though, what are the likely impact of any sanction and what areas will they be looking at the sanction? You, you alluded earlier to that it might be on individuals who, are, sanctions, yes. yeah, who are participants of this, but uh, we'll get to hear his perspective. But the, 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 the part that stood out for me was that over 200,000 people signed the petition to ask that the UK Parliament take an action uh, as, um, to what happened um, in um, Lecky and uh, find justice for uh, the victims of that uh, brutality yes. that is being vehemently denied uh, by the federal government as uh, represented by the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed. You know, uh, curious for me is, like I alluded earlier, is the fact that um, it says the federal government, let me see if I can find where I wrote that, that the federal government is going to take action irrespective of whether CNN does a further investigation. Also, what I find curious is the fact that the tweet, I actually screen grabbed it uh, to see if, I went this morning just before we came on this program to look at that tweet and the report. The CNN says at least 38 people were killed in Nigeria on Tuesday when the military opened fire on peaceful protesters. I'm reading the tweet, but the president failed to address the carnage during his speech on Thursday, drawing criticism from protesters who accuse him of failing to show empathy and unify the nation. I find it curious that this tweet is still there when the same CNN has come up to say 
that they stand by their reports, that they can confirm that one person, at least I watched that report, that one person died in that incident. So this, I want to get the perspective of our guest we'll, on we'll, this, we'll, hopefully, we'll, we'll we'll be able to, to um, uh, understand the rationale for keeping this tweet alive. People, the Minister of Information keeps referencing that tweet saying, these people say, just barely a month after you come up with a report, confirming that just one person died, that you can independently confirm that one person died. But it's, it's also because, you know, there is generally a struggle, you know, aside, you know, CNN now, local media, the government, you know, and people on ground, you know, are still struggling with exact figures um, of uh, casualties for, for um, of, um, of that incident. And so it's, um, it's you know, I wouldn't, yes, the tweet should maybe be deleted, but um, everyone is struggling with, exact figures, you know, not just CNN now, every other person. No, but it, it would make sense, ideally, that if you now have a follow-up report that confirms from your investigation that one person died, it is due response. There is nobody that's above well, no, nobody, the state. No, nobody, nobody can give, you know, those figures yet. And so until they get there. Good morning, Mr. Johnson, once again. Good morning. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you join us. So just get you right uh, to talking. Uh, what is your reaction to uh, the UK parliamentary session um, on the NSAR's protest and the uh, possibilities of sanction? Well, um, the discussion in the British Parliament came about because there was an electronic um, petition signed by almost a quarter of a million people. And um, it shows that we live in a global village. And all that has happened and happened during the um, Tollgate issue uh, is around the entire world. The British government in July, um, passed um, uh, sanctions, a particular sanctions law that allows them to target um, um, individuals in governments regarding human rights abuses and what have you. Yeah, I think you're referring to the global human rights sanctions exactly. regime. Yeah. Yes. And so... It is something that is in the works. It is good that it has been discussed. And I believe that others will also put Nigeria on the spot and in the limelight. Uh, um, maybe the European Union and others. So that this matter will um, be fully discussed and there will be pressure brought on our, on some of our government officials. All right, uh, tell us uh, some of these sanctions that you think uh, will likely uh, be, um, you know, introduced, and what impact would it have in checking some of these excesses? Well, I think over the years, um, governments around the world have begun to target particular individuals. Um, it's difficult to say what will happen because they will look at each individual, whether it's the IG, whatever it is, they look at the individual, they know where their assets are around the world, they go for the assets, they bar them from certain things or from traveling and things like that. So. It is not, they are not sanctions, I believe, that will um, hurt the people of the country. They're probably not sanctions on the economy. They specifically mentioned that they will be targeted sanctions. And um, I do know that they will take their time and investigate thoroughly and be sure that the people they have targeted, if they do target them, are people who played one role or the other 
um, during the incident. Okay, Mr. Johnson, I, I want to ask uh, something here. The narratives, you know, have been disputed, you know, overly by the government. They have, of course, uh, said a lot of these things are from unverified sources. Uh, they've disputed a CNN report also. The government has also relied a little bit on the BBC reporter, you know, who, of course, uh, put out the story earlier. Um, what information do you think the UK Parliament is using for these uh, debates uh, as it stands? Um, and also, you know, bear in mind, they also mentioned other things. And um, I remember watching the videos yesterday. One of them mentioned uh, prose persecution of Christians and, of course, the fight against corruption and other things. But uh, first, what information do you think they are relying on um, with regards to this debate? I think they will look, um, they have to be very careful. And so they will look at every information available. But the basic thing, you see, the, the various informations as to how many people died, what happened and everything. But the basic thing was that there was a peaceful process, um, protest that went on for maybe a week or more. Unfortunately, miscreants burnt Orile police station, the problems in Mushi, and then the peaceful protesters were shot later that day in the evening. So the basic thing is that there was a peaceful process you sent the military to the peaceful protest. So that is the place to begin, and I think that is where they've begun. And then, as you say, there are various accounts, and they have to look at those accounts. So it's not something that will happen. If it will happen, the sanctions, the sanctions it will, it's not something that will happen overnight. They have to be thorough about it. And I'm sure the foreign office and they they have, as you know, they have intelligence um, and they have um, others who are also the CIA, different, different what, what, European what, what countries. Would you, what, before we go on to talk about um, Lai Mohammed and the uh, CNN reports, what do you think would be um, Nigeria's response should the UK uh, choose to um, impose any sort of sanction and do you think maybe they're they're silent now because there has been no sanction um, <laughs> this government I think will be defiant they will be defiant um, you have seen what will happen in the way they've reacted to the CNN report. What you would have expected is, oh, CNN, you've spoken. We really don't agree, but we're taking these steps, these steps, these steps to investigate and make sure that those who are involved are brought to book on both sides. Okay. But okay. what you see or what you've seen from government is they've doubled down. The Minister of Information has gone to great lengths to start to challenge the CNN's report, say that it's not fair and what have you. So, so of what I relevance that is that, um, uh, sorry to interject, of, of what relevance really are those, um, uh, rather, is the later to CNN by uh, the Minister of Information, was it necessary well, I, they may feel, or he may feel, when I say they, I mean the government, they may feel that um, on the international stage, it is important for them to puncture the veracity of the CNN um, report. Okay. I feel yeah. that um, there's been enough to indict the government. As I said, whether one person died, or 100 people died. The bottom line is that we all agree that these protesters were unarmed and you sent in the military. All right, Ladipo Johnson, let me let me come in um, once again. Yeah. One of the statements by 
uh, the Minister of Information, Lai Mohammed, in, in that letter um, basically said that the report, the CNN report, did not, did not allow balance and fairness and also did not present the government's side. I, I want your quick thoughts on that. Do you think he has a strong point there? CNN, in their follow-up report, which I watched earlier this morning, said that they had repeatedly tried to uh, speak with the Nigerian authorities and with the Nigerian army, but um, they, they weren't given any audience. Um, so when Lai Mohammed says that they, the CNN report didn't allow for uh, uh, balance and fairness and didn't present the government's side, do you think he has a strong point there? Well, really, I don't, because as, as, as you said, the CNN report mentioned that it made attempts to get in touch and get comments from the military. According the to CNN, report, according to CNN you, that, that might also... Yes, according to CNN, claims, yeah. yes. The report is not a court of law, right? There's no audio ultra pattern. Uh, may, I, may, may, may I also bring in the part where the minister talked about the availability of the federal government. If they weren't getting response from the state government, um, they didn't reach out to the federal government. He alluded to the fact that the journalist who carried out the investigation has access to his office, could have um, you know, offered them the courtesy of allowing um, a government position before publication. Uh, would that be um, a fair position to take? Well, well, yes, he will. He is making his points, and yes, he has a point. But as I say, overall, I doubt whether you know it because the report basically was not about what led to it. Government, this is your side. The youth, this is your side. No, it was what happened, what they saw. Now he can say that the videos or the clips they had are unverified or what have you, but they have tried to cover that. Basically what they did was to say, this is what happened. Not this, these are the things that led to it. Government, is it true that when you were negotiating, this happened, this has happened. So go, go on and, and share your views on when the, the Minister of Information, he, he once again used that same statement on verified footages. Um, I, I want your thoughts on that. Um, how can you know we verify if, if we're going to hold on to Lai Mohammed's uh, statements? And do you, you know, also think that when statements like these are made, the government should be making some effort in showing what the true images were? Uh, if, if exactly. CNN has been, you know, accused of using unverified footage and, and um, 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 content and live streaming also, um, should the government then at least try and show us a better, um, you know, a truer picture? Definitely. The government should, in debunking what the CNN has done, should come up with its own position properly. Okay. Videos okay. and whatever they have to show that um, the, 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 they were not shot or they were shooting upwards, skywards, or what have you. All right, uh, there's another thing that he alluded to in that report. He, not alluded to, he made reference to uh, a publication by the CNN um, on its Twitter handle on October 23 when it said that uh, 38 people uh, died. Uh, does he have a point there? Does the CNN have a responsibility to either retract or confirm that figure in light of the further um, investigation they say that they have con uh, conducted? Yeah, um, the thing there is uh, the final investigate, well, not the final, the, the latest investigation we have from the CNN, I'm not so sure it mentioned a particular number of people that have died. No, I'm, I'm re referencing a tweet that was put out. I checked this morning before I came on air. It was yes. still there. The tweet that 38 people died when fire was opened on peaceful protesters on Tuesday, October 20. The tweet was put out on the 23rd of October, by the yes. way. Yes. By the CNN? Yes. yes. That tweet is still there. And the uh, well, uh, Minister in which of case, Information... If it, is, if it is, they should uh, update it. 
and say that they're not sure about the figures yet. You understand? Does, 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 this, does this aspect for you give any credence to the arguments from the Ministry of Information led by Lai Mohammed uh, that the CNN have a case to answer? Well, I don't... I, the standards we have in Nigeria through the Nigerian Broadcasting Commission, I believe, uh, are maybe different to the international standards that we have. Um, sorry, I'm on air. I make bold to say that they are not so, the media houses are not so free in Nigeria at the moment, unfortunately. And in that light, you may say, because the language being used by um, the Minister of Information, like we will sanction the CNN and everything, is just seen as a joke around the whole world. Okay. Yes, if the CNN has gone overboard and whatever, you call them to order. But the language we use is different. So, so now let's look at the language. Apologies. Let's also look at the language. I'm, I'm quoting the um, uh, petition or the letter from uh, Lai Mohammed. Um, yeah. It says, government reserves the rights to take actions within its laws to prevent CNN from aggravating the end size crisis. Share your thoughts on that one. What... Um, um, actions can the government possibly take against CNN? Well, the government can, in its own wisdom, say that um, CNN shouldn't be aired um, in Nigeria at all. They could try to impose a fine within their laws. I haven't read the laws specifically, but since they were able to find other um, media agencies, Maybe they can do that as well. They, they can do that. But they have to be careful because the international community will see any um, sanctions on the CNN as a step towards um, stifling the press even further um, in Nigeria. Okay. And these things will start with NSARS and, God forbid, affect our government, the standing of our government in the Committee of Nations. We have a government that has gone a borrowing and is still borrowing, and these things will affect the economy even further. All so right. I believe that... Um, our government must really, really look in the mirror. Okay, what, um, I mean, before we wrap this conversation, it's been playing in my head. I want to get your perspective. We've asked this question of some of our guests on the breakfast. Um, what do you make of this, uh, this seeming di distortion or confusion about the facts of the day? The protest has been on. I'm talking about the Lecky Tollgate event. What do you yes. make of all the haziness that seem to have now covered this page where people are now questioning what is fact and what is fiction? And then we see the um, blatant attempt to distort what happened. Yeah, the, you see, the, the problem here is this. From the word go, it was clear what government was going to do. And it was clear that as you said, there will be distortion of it. Even at the tribunal, the Lagos tribunal, first the military said something, then later they admitted something else. Mr. Governor said something, later on he said something else. These actions are not good. If you do that in a court of law, the judge or the jury, if it's another jurisdiction, will not trust you. The bottom line, as I said earlier, is that this protest had been seen to be peaceful. By that evening, there were problems in Uribe, in Mushi. You didn't send the soldiers there. You sent them to the peaceful place. Um, like so if I were sitting on the panel, automatically I would be biased against the government. 
All right. Let, 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 me, let me also ask uh, uh, this. I, I think I, I hope that we have time to take these two um, uh, questions. Uh, okay. The first one is, you know, f following up on what you just said, um, the UK Parliament, let's go back there, um, yes. was able to clearly distinguish between the peaceful protesters and the looters and uh, the hoodlums, if you call them that. Um, but the Nigerian government has cons consistently and continuously merge the two of them together yes they have it described... seems better to do that <laughs> so so what, what 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 do you make of that and then second a um, couple of hours ago actually late last night cnn us and, and i'm not referring to cnn international now that is watched by you know us here in Nigeria yes. and the rest of the world yes. um cnn united states w was where the follow-up report was aired um, and, of course, that shows to the whole of the United States. Is that more damning to the Nigerian government? Does that expose the Nigerian government even more? Does that do more damage to the credibility of the Nigerian government, uh, putting it on that platform and not on CNN International now? Well, um, the forgive me, the Americans, um, especially the Donald Trump supporters, uh, introverted people. It's all about America first. I think the international was probably more damning, you understand, for us, because um, those in government and decision makers in the United States would probably watch and get tweets from CNN International anyway. But um, yes, it will go to the people, as you say, the, the local CNN will go to the people and it will back up anything the government of the U.S. would want to do if it gets involved, if at all it gets involved okay. in this in this matter. I'm still um, with the UK Parliament. I want to ask your assessment of the response of Nigeria's National Assembly to uh, the NSARS situation. What do you say they have done well representing the people um, when it comes to this protest and their responses have been commiserate to the issues raised? I don't think so. You know why I say that? Why? Because simply I cannot really tell, you understand, what our National Assembly has done regarding this matter. Even if they've set up committees or whatever, it hasn't had the force necessary. The unfortunate situation is that it seems that those sitting there on behalf of their constituents are sitting there on their behalf, their personal um they have instead of the people really we shouldn't be where we are at with this thing okay All and right. as you said earlier because i didn't answer the other part of the question the government it pays the government better the nigerian government to lump up the peaceful protesters and those who went rioting yes all right. I want to. I want to quickly ask. Uh, we're out of time. I want to quickly ask this now. With regards to diplomacy, the relationship between the United Kingdom and Nigeria, Boris Johnson, um, and all those factors. You know, how do you think that they might play out here? Uh, do you think that we, should, you know, still have a great relationship with the United Kingdom that we wouldn't want to destroy? Can the Nigerian government be able to, of course, you know, stay on the good side of the United Kingdom, uh, regardless of what their parliament is deciding at a time like this? Well, the United Kingdom is weak at the moment. It's getting weaker because of the Brexit issue. But with Joe Biden coming in, yes. you have someone who believes in multilateralism. So everything will go back to countries coming together and putting pressure on erring states or erring individuals. All right, so Mr. at the moment, I think that um, the British will play it safe. They'll take some time, investigate properly before they take steps. Um, so I guess that's how we'll wrap way. it yeah. up. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Johnson, for your time and your thoughts. It is appreciated. 
Thank you very much. Have a lovely day. Yes, you sir. too. You too. Great, um, great point that you brought up, um, Felicity, about the uh, Nigerian National Assembly comparing it to the UK, UK Parliament. You know, have they truly stood for the people? Have they truly mm -hmm. represented the people? The people that uh, voted them in, in power? You know, if you yeah. spend eight years there and you really cannot come together as a National Assembly and say, these are our investigations, these are you know, our recommendations, and these are our thoughts towards these things, then you're almost of no use to the Nigerian people. Um, why do the Nigerian people celebrate a UK Parliament debate on, on, on a protest in Nigeria? Because they know that the Nigerian National Assembly would almost never take... No, but they did, in, in, like in fairness to the National Assembly, I'm not holding fort for them, yeah. but there were conversations about the um, NSARS protests. Remember, the um, uh, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Wajabia Mila, said that he will not sign off on the 2021 budget unless, you know, um, point he funds, made yes, funds are put there for victims of police brutality. Um, some might say um, it's uh, not enough, uh, but I mean. And also, why did it take this long? You know, uh, the, it, the, it, the stories of police brutality have been on for years. It, it didn't yeah, but start we're, we're talking a response to the, the NSAS protest. protest yeah. Remember, and if you also want to look at it from you know somebody that's sitting on the sideline, you would say that it took the UK Parliament quite a while to get to the point of having a real debate on what happened in yeah. Nigeria. Well, first of all, they, they right? needed they need a petition that is sent to them. 200,000 plus people plus signed that people, petition. Yes. The Nigerian government and Nigerian National Assembly could petition. have prevented an NSARS protest if they had stepped in years ago when stories of uh, police brutality were flooding you know, the, you know, the news in Nigeria. They didn't, and that's what resulted in the, in the NSARS, NSARS protest. protest. So whatever it is that they're doing today, yes, I would give it to them and say, yes, you know, a good thing that you've you've spoken here and there. Femi Bajabiamila um, also, you know, and steps even if now he's in the news for the same thing yeah, after he's oddly his shot and killed somebody. Shot. So, yeah, so um, uh, I mean, we will continue to talk about this things until we get the required change. But I must mention something here that uh, the, going back to the CNN report uh, that we discussed uh, here, people would argue that um, the event happened in Lagos, not at the federal seat of power. And that um, CNN did not have to go to the federal government to get a response when the parent, the primary people who are in charge of the state, you have to start from where the event happened before you go to the federal government. And it was not like it was a general NSAS uh, investigative piece. It was focused on what happened, happened at but the Lekki. But they did speak with um, the governor to, of the state. No, no, I'm, I'm talking about Lai Mohammed referencing the fact that if oh. they talked to the governor, it didn't work. They talked to the army, it didn't work. It didn't work. Why didn't they reach out to his office, uh, talk to the federal government to get a response uh, before they went ahead and published? And um, I'm just putting out the argument that people will look at it from that perspective and say, hey, this happened in Lagos. It was not about the generality of the protest, but the events at oh. the Lekki Toge. But... Uh, the, on the issue of those um, tweet about the 38 people uh, that allegedly died, I think uh, CNN does have a responsibility to explain uh, their decision to leave that tweet pending or not a follow-up comment, update that uh, tweet um, yes. on the market. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.